What's going on everybody? Welcome to another Flask web development tutorial. In this video, what we're gonna be talking about is how as a developer, we can create a directory where the contents of that directory are protected in some form. So as it stands right now, you could have like a page, right? That's for example, what we covered long ago was a login required decorator, a page that requires the user to log in. But so far we haven't really discussed how you could possibly create a file that required a user to log in or required a user to be say, uh, in the case of Python programming.net, a plus equals one subscriber to download. Okay. So that's what we're going to be talking about today, because if you just put files in the static directory, uh, that directory is completely public. So when someone goes there, uh, goes to your website, they can go to your website slash static and they have access to all of those files. There's really nothing you can do about that. Um, so what we're going to be talking about is what you can do, how you can make your own little hidden directory. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the init.py. And uh, at the very top here, where we're importing a bunch of stuff from Flask, we're going to import one more thing, and that is uh, send underscore from underscore directory. And let me make my text a bit bigger for everyone. Okay. So uh, send from directory. Directory. And now what we want to do is just find us a nice spot to begin. I'm just going to look for that ginger man. Yeah. <laughs> And here's where we're going to start writing some new uh, code. So first of all, we need a protected um, <clears throat> URL path. So what we're going to do is let's just we'll write this uh, afresh. So app.root and the root for this will be protected. And then what we're going to have is a path here. So path and then colon file name. So this should look pretty familiar. These are, this is a URL converter. So what this means is we're gonna require the first part of the path is protected. After that, we're just collecting whatever the path is. And then we're gonna perform some kind of uh, ninja stuff here. And uh, you'll see what I mean in a minute. So then after that, we this is a protected, right? So we need to have some sort of special requirement for uh, this path. So what we're going to use is a wrapper and we'll go uh, uh, special underscore requirement. <laughs> so right now, obviously that doesn't exist, but we'll, we'll create that and we will, we'll have a special requirement soon enough. Now we'll define protected and protected. will have the path, right? This path file name has to be passed through uh, and we're ready to rumble. First, let's go ahead and have a try and accept just in case we screw up accept exception as E. Uh, and then we'll return, uh, just in case, actually, since this is protected stuff, let's just return a redirect and the URL for main. So that would be the URL for the homepage, basically. Now, uh, what we're going to do if basically if special requirement is true, what we're going to try to do is return a send from directory and then we're going to apply some wizardry here. So the, what we're going to call is uh, we're going to say, oh, I believe we have OS imported. Let me go to the top. Yeah. So we do have OS imported. If you don't, you'll need it. Uh, let's go back to where we were. Uh, we're going to say os.path.join. And then we want to join the app.instance underscore path. And then uh, empty quotes here comma file name. Okay. So let's make sure that closes off correctly. Right. So what's going to happen is it's going to take the file name and it's going to, um, basically the app up here, we're telling, we told where, where is it? Did we do it? No, we didn't do it. <laughs> okay. We'll get there. So, uh, what's going to want, what's going to do is reference. Um, now I'm lost. Ginger man. Uh, it's going to reference this instance path, which we have to add. And from that instance path, it will go to the file name. And uh, so it'll be like the instance path plus the file name, and it will return whatever exists there. But we need the instance path. So let's go up to the very top here. And where you've defined app equals flask name, we need to add this instance path. So just do a comma, 
and then instance underscore path. And that's going to be equal to the path to this protected directory, which doesn't exist. So let's go ahead and make one. So new directory, and I'm going to call this protected. OK, so the path to protected is pretty simple. We can come in here and just click this. But it's the full path. So var www, then your app name, app name, and then protected. So I'm just going to copy and paste that in there. So that is the instance path. And then after the instance path comes the other stuff. So let's go protected. And so it wouldn't ha you don't have to call it protected. You could call this, you could really call this something else entirely. We're just happening to call this protected, but you could call this um, secret, okay? And everything would work fine because that's not, a we're not using this path at all. We're using the, this path plus the instance path. So just keep that in mind that this doesn't have to have the same name as that directory, but I'm going to call it protected. Well, we'll call it secret just to show you that it works. So uh, return. Yeah, so that's everything we need to do basically up to there. Now we need something to be secret. So I've got this super secret um, Python image. Let's see. Let's bring that up. You might not be able to see it very well, but it's, it's top secret. Okay. <laughs> So we'll take that image and we'll throw it up into here. And now uh, we're ready to try and, and visit this. Now, special requirement, let's see. Well, we're going to need to create special requirement first before we can visit it because that doesn't exist. So now what we'll do is we'll create that special requirement wrapper. So this is just like a login required. I don't know if we actually wrote our own login required. We did. So this basically is a lot how it works, but we'll just write our own just because we're like that. But uh, you could just use the login required, but this is the login required kind of, that's not the same as what kind of what we're doing. But anyway, uh, so we're going to define special underscore requirement. And what we pass through here is an F for a function. So wrappers do exist outside of uh, Flask. <laughs> they do the same thing. They just wrap around another function. So F there is just for, for the function. And basically what we say here is at wraps F. And then we just go ahead and define the wrap, uh, which takes args and quargs. So that's arguments and keyword arguments. And then what we're going to say is try, and then we're going to have an accept. And if the exception is triggered, we return a redirect URL for, uh, and we'll probably, I think we'll just return the dashboard every time. And, uh, and then mm, after that, we return wrap. And then now let's actually build in this try. Uh, so what we're going to say is we're, this one's going to require the user to be Harrison. Feel free to put your own name in here. If you don't have one and you're going off of our files, you can just sign up really quick to the website and use whatever username you sign up as. So if Harrison equals session username, again, you, this, this if statement can be anything you want, right? That's, this is the crux of this wrapper. This is the special requirement, right? So... Uh, if that's the case, we return f along with the args and quargs. I'm just going to copy and paste args and quargs from up here. We return the function, no problem. Otherwise, what do we want to do? We're just going to return redirect for dashboard. So anybody who tries to come here and does not meet this requirement is going to be sent to dashboard. Okay. So there's our wrapper. That's basically everything we need. Uh, so we're ready to rumble now, I believe. So let's save this. Uh, and then we're going to need to reload. And uh, we'll come over to our website. Let's make sure everything works. I had a sneaking suspicion we were going to get that. Let's uh, let's go ahead and Python init.py. Got invalid. Oh, we didn't have a comma between args and quargs. What <laughs> amateur? All right, we'll try again. Uh, let's just run it since we had it. Okay, so we should be all set. Let's reload again bring back over refresh and I think we called it secret uh, I think I changed that yeah so we're calling it secret so it would be secret and then it was python.jpg and let's see am I logged in I am NOT logged in right now whoops 
I think it I think it might have taken us, but I'm not sure. Let's try one more time. Secret python.jpg. So that is where I, I think it's supposed to send me if I'm full, but yeah, okay. So at least that one, it sent me back to the dashboard. We could flash something like you're not allowed to see this or something like that. Uh, but let's go ahead and log in now. We're logging in as Harrison, so that's fine. We log in. And now let's go to secret and then again, python.jpg. And sure enough, there it is. You might get a reader. Well, you won't get a redirect. I don't think if you did it in the order I did it. But what if like right now you could do this. You could go back to your homepage, log out, and then you might be able to get away with going to secret Python JPG. Right. So uh, this isn't a flaw. It's just that's called cache. And so what you want to do is shift F5 if you're in Chrome or something like that. That'll hard uh, refresh. And there you go. That was just your cache loading that URL for you, but you really cannot view that. Okay, so anyway, that's pretty cool. Uh, that's just a way for you to kind of protect any any files you want. And because of the, the way that we've done it, this is a path, it can be any path. And then we pull it apart and, uh, and, and just get that file name for you basically. So, you know, you could hide something in even further, like, like I don't know, super secret. And uh, we could put that file in there again and um, I don't, we shouldn't have to refresh anything, but let's log in and we should, that that will be hidden at secret, super secret, python.jpg. And there it is again. So that allows you to kind of organize everything exactly how you want. And again, like I was telling you guys before with the URL converters, this is a perfect example of how uh, it can make one function extremely powerful. So anyways, uh, that's it for this tutorial. Uh, if you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. In the next tutorial, we're going to be talking about Flask and jQuery. Uh, that's going to be a pretty interesting one. Basically, the whole idea behind that is to make your, your website a lot more interactive. So what jQuery is going to let you do is an Ajax, basically, both of those. But what it's going to let you do is allow the user to kind of interact with that web page and let that web page run background operations and reload, or not reload, I'm trying to and update the page basically in real time. Basically, it, it allows the user to not have to have the page ref actually like refresh and start them back at the top and scroll down and stuff like that. So um, it's a really powerful if you, if you use it. It can be really nice. It makes the, uh, I guess, user interaction a lot more uh, enjoyable. So anyways, that's what we'll be covering in the next tutorial, so stay tuned for that. Otherwise, thanks for watching.